This is a great question. So research shows that lower percentages of free versus bound PSA might be associated with prostate cancer. Let's talk about why. Remember, PSA is a protein normally secreted by the prostate into seminal fluid. Its job is to cleave other proteins within the seminal fluid and help the semen liquefy. Now, sometimes you can get cancer in the prostate, and what it does is it grows and it invades and it destroys local prostate tissue. This growth disrupts basal layers and basement membranes and local architecture of the gland and allows more PSA to seep into the blood instead of going into the semen. This is why increased total PSA levels is sometimes associated with prostate cancer. Now, in a normal prostate, small amounts of PSA will normally leak into the blood. And while in the blood, this PSA can be bound to other proteins, or it might be found in an inactive form by itself. So I made a diagram to help us understand this. So imagine PSA as being like Pac-Man. Remember, it's a protease, meaning that its job is to break up other proteins by degrading peptide bonds. This is how it liquefies semen. Now before leaking into the blood, PSA sometimes undergoes proteolytic processing in the prostate, meaning that it is cut up in such a way that it is no longer active and can't degrade proteins by itself. That's kind of why I cut off Pac-Man's mouth over here. In other cases, active PSA might actually leak directly into the blood, but of course our blood doesn't want active proteases running around where they're not supposed to, so it secretes these proteins that will bind and inactivate the PSA. These proteins, or really anti-proteases, include ACT, alpha-2 macroglobulin, and alpha-1 protease inhibitor. Now in prostate cancer, due to this architectural disruption by this tumor, more PSA can leak into the serum and escape proteolytic processing. Meaning that instead of being inactivated here, more active PSA escapes into the serum and is then bound by these proteins. So that is why you see a lower percentage of free PSA in prostate cancer. So right now, researchers and clinicians are still trying to figure out how useful this whole free to bound PSA ratio is. And it appears that there is no one single magic ratio or magic cutoff value for PSA that applies to everyone. A value that is healthy in one person might be very alarming in another person. And values and ratios must be interpreted in common context of a person's entire clinical picture and medical history. Typically, total PSA values above 10 are almost always alarming and warrant further investigation for prostate cancer, but values below 10 can be more difficult to interpret. And what clinicians believe is that using free-to-bound PSA ratios will be most useful in making clinical decisions for those with those medium to low values of total PSA.